it says here to do a not lame introduction. Did you have anything else in mind, like what a not lame introduction would look like, be like? I figured we could get to it when we got to it. Well, we're here, and uh, we're crossing this, is, this bridge. This is a pretty lame introduction so far, but I think we. How just can have we to... make it not lame? I mean, we'll just they throw some fancy, booyah graphics, graphic, there we go. graphics, graphic everywhere, graphic. Let's just get into this because this is not going to be a lame episode. No, it's not. Not going to be a lame episode. For UTD TV, this is Day the Transmission, your podcast talking about social issues in the technology sector. On today's episode, we're talking about media consumption. Joining me here, as always, is my friend, Pranjal. I Hi, Pranjal. Good to see you. It's good it's to see like you. It's been like a solid 15 minutes. Yeah, I see you every day because I live with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, in case that audience was not clear. Uh, We're roommates. We're we, good yeah. friends. We're good friends. Um, we fight. Like a, a married lot. couple. Yeah, except <laughs> no, we're not. But we're good buds. We're good buds. Yeah. That's right. So, so what are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about media consumption. And we're going to talk about, I mean, that that includes just, just everything. It's a really broad thing. But yeah, media consumption is our topic. So I'm sort of just going to jump right in here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the way that we as humans consume media has changed drastically since the beginning of time. I mean, the early, early, early days, you would have like storytelling. People would draw pictures on the walls of caves and whatnot. And that's how they would consume media. That's how they would entertain. That's all they had was yeah. media, basically. Um, so it always was like live performance, word of mouth. And that's sort of how it evolved from generation to generation in the earliest of times. Yeah. Well, then, then we got the ability to record and transmit. Those performances. Transmit data transmission. We transmitted the data. Um, because now now we, you have all these technologies. You have radio um, really started it off. And by now, you mean like 40s and 50s. That's yeah. where we are yeah, in the Yeah, that's where timeline. we're in, in the timeline. Um, 1940s, 1950s. Um, specifically, like right, right there in the middle of right post-World War II, American suburbanism, like that whole thing where the middle class exploded, the American dream was alive and well, and everything, unlike now. Do you um, think the American dream isn't alive and well? I do. I don't anymore. Okay. I think it's changed at least, but that, that's well, another that's not, topic. That's not our topic And for that's today. not a tech topic. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, if anyone really wants to know what we feel about that, just come find us. Come to one of our parties. We'll have a nice yes. talk. Yes. Like, uh, like Plato. A fireside chat, yes. if you will. We'll have a party with a really good talk, Socrates We can call it a symposium. Mm. Mm. Go okay. to a salon. Yes. Um, anyway, so we have things like globalization um, made it possible for people to experience forms of entertainment that were completely outside their reach before. Um, experience the different cultures, different... I mean, I mean, just look at the entire industry of, of, of anime or of Bollywood stuff, right? Like, I mean, without being able to record and retransmit that stuff, I mean, people in America or anywhere else in the world wouldn't be able to know and have access to that kind of stuff, um, however you may feel about that. Um, and then mobilization um, opened up the ability for people to consume content anytime, anywhere. Uh, we all have our mobile phones, iPads, whatever. Um, Pull it right I mean, out. you could you could pull out your phone and start watching Netflix right now if you wanted. I'm gonna do that. And you actually. could watch Thanks literally anything you wanted. That that's an option um, that I can. And that's what's re that's really neat. Um, and that's caused some changes from just people watching theater performances or painting on cave walls. Um, yeah. And even in the past ten years, specifically, I mean, especially with with mobile devices. Um, and the internet and everyone's pretty much always connected. Um, we got a nice tour group out here. Hi, everybody. Hi, tour group. Hello. Come to UTD and you'll be stressed. You can um, be on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so media's, media's changed um, and and we're consuming things in a different way than we used to. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm going to throw down some statistics on that different statistics. way. If that's okay. That's probably a little loud on the mics. That's okay. Statistics. Um, so, obviously, the internet is a big deal. I don't think I need to say that. <laughs> I hope not. I will I will put some, some numbers to it. In 2010, the average American spent 45 minutes a day on the internet. 45 minutes a day. Now, we spend three or more hours on the internet. This is like 
insane. And that's I'm as far as I'm aware, th this came from Recode. They did a survey with a company called Zenith. But I'm pretty sure this is like internet proper. This is like you're in Google Chrome. It doesn't include the time you spend on like the Twitter app on your phone. Mm, so, interesting. Huge. Yeah. Um, now, in, in that same time, TV consumption went down from 190 minutes to 160, which, if you notice, is not that big of a decline. What does that include? Like cable TV? Or? I think this means proper you're sitting in front of your TV, okay, like your okay. television okay. in your living okay. room. Um, now, that, that's not a big drop, which mm -hmm. is interesting, and it's going to be my next point. Um, but actually not my next point, but one of them. So, And TV consumption is still decreasing, just for the record. Um, but another interesting shift is from the desktop web to the mobile web. Mm, so yeah. back in 2010, when we spent 45 minutes online, 80% of those 45 minutes were on a computer, so on a desktop or a laptop. Yeah. Now, 80% of the three plus hours we spend online is mobile. It's on mm. a cell phone. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, which is crazy. Yeah. And so here's the, the, the point that I had mentioned earlier but delayed. The amount of time we spend consuming media is ridiculous. The average American, we're pushing 11 hours a day consuming some form of media. And, wow. you know, we're going to see a, a slowdown in growth in mm -hmm. how much time is spent consuming media. Not because people want to consume less, because there literally isn't more time in the day to watch more TV, to play more video yeah. games. To, yeah. I mean, we're just, there's only 24 hours in a day. I mean, think of it. I mean, if, you, if you're spending an average of 10 and a half, right? I mean, that leaves, and then you have another, you have to average about eight of sleeping, 18 and a half hours. I mean, that's what, 25 and a, or five and a half hours left. To do everything else in the day, yeah. I mean, but I mean, I mean, we still can't. We can't ignore like the combination of people say like eating and doing meals while consuming and, media and, you know, and, if, and listening. This listening to music. That's what I'm saying. That. Like, if I'm listening to Spotify when I'm at work, like yeah. I'm sure that you're counts. multitasking. But, but still, yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, that makes it really important. Um, yeah, it's crazy. So how do we get that media? Um, so, yeah, that's that's, I, the, that's the that's the first discussion we're gonna have yeah. today. I mean, which we, is, we used to. Um, I mean, I say we as as far as humanity, society. specifically in America, it's kind of our our topic um, that we're talking about. And really, all of kind of Western developed civilization is very similar. Yeah, even 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 undeveloped countries. There's yeah, we, we okay. Let's let's talk about our original attempt at, at episode number three. It <laughs> oh, was for a different uh, topic, yeah. but we did do some interesting research, and we found out there are more people in the world with smartphones than with access to toilets. Do you yeah. remember what that number was offhand? Uh, four and a half billion with smartphones. Uh, let me double check because I don't want to. I don't want to misquote this because and, and Nish isn't here, so we can't. We can't. Ask, we can't ask we can't Nish be to pull like, this pull up. That up, Nish, because Nish isn't here. Um, unfortunately, episode <laughs> the original episode three, which we started recording, which was terrible. All right, so <laughs> six billion people in the world have smartphones. Okay, and four and a half. Four and a half is billion toilets? have toilets and working sanitation. Nuts. <laughs> yeah i mean it's i mean that's crazy yes um, it's insane but i mean so let's let's backtrack back to the back to the 50s and the where all the baby boomers started sure um and uh we think about how did people consume content i mean i guess the radio stuff was pre-world war ii um but still i mean you would have families sitting around their their big radio box listening to the nightly radio show and then when you had tvs and you have small like Pretty small, black and white TVs. They were huge for the time, and they yeah they were big. But you're getting that over the airwaves, over physical um, cable. I don't know when cable started, I think, but I but think anyways, TV, it was it was oh no they had yeah, the antennas. I mean they you were either antennas. from the airwaves, and then eventually we moved into cable and ground leg. But I mean you were you were just getting a stream of content from a company that was controlling. That content, single company, um, and even up through the past, I mean, the, in, into the 21st century, um, you either have, you have Time Warner, you have Uverse, you have whatever other cables, you buy your cable package, you get all of these channels, you have a bunch of channels you don't care about or need, um, and you're paying a hundred bucks a month for that. And it's it's worth mentioning with this stream of content, you're not controlling it, right? Correct. It's like you want to watch some TV. You're going to sit down at your TV. You're yeah. going to watch what's on it or you're not going to watch at all. Yeah. And you're right about um, – I mean, that, that's it's, what channel surfing that's, that's, came. Exactly. I mean, you're going, flipping through channels and seeing what's good and what's on. Right. And then the big thing to point out is that last part that you said, which I think we should emphasize, which is that you're paying this large sum of money for a content and, like, you're not watching a lot yeah. of it. 
And that, um, you know, obviously people were dissatisfied with that. That's why we've seen like this increasing sort of um, cord cutter movement where people aren't doing yeah. traditional cable anymore. Yeah. So tell us, Ethan, what are we doing now instead of what we used to do? We're doing a lot of stuff. Um and really, that's the big thing of, I mean, we, I mean, let, let's think about, I mean, I don't know, did you end up fi finding any statistics on some of the biggest usage, usages of uh, different services? I mean, I don't know, but they're all, they're I mean, all up there's there. There's no one out I there mean, that's all like up there. this so percent have, of people watch yeah, Netflix or You have whatever. internet streaming, you have Netflix, you have Amazon Prime Video, you have Hulu, you have, I mean, countless others that I'm pro that I'm probably forgetting. Everyone has their own streaming service now. Um, if and you, you don't, have, you suck. Yeah, well, mm, Disney's trying to do that, but it's, I, I think oh. it's it's out now. It's called Disney Plus. Is it okay? We'll it's get, we'll get into some like, of those issues in a second. But then yeah. you have things like YouTube, you have Spotify, you have um, don't forget Apple Music. Apple Music. Okay, you have Apple Music. You have SoundCloud. I mean, there's there's so many different ways to consume content. A lot of it's free. A lot. And of then it is. even the ones that aren't. I mean, say Netflix. I mean, they keep they've raised their prices, but their top subscription right now I think is fifteen bucks a month. Yeah, you could get the cheap one right. for like what eight bucks, yeah. nine bucks. I mean, and and let's say realistically, someone needs it doesn't need, but you're someone is able to have all the content they really want with probably two streaming services, right? I mean, I spend. I'll I'll be upfront. I watch ninety percent of the the things that I watch on like proper TV on Hulu, mm -hmm. and then the other one is Netflix. I could get yeah. by with just Hulu if I absolutely mm -hmm. needed but to. But even if you wanted Hulu and Netflix, right? I mean, you'd be looking at maybe $30 a month. Not even. Not even. And then compared to a $100 plus cable package... It's, it's good for us. It's good for yeah, consumers. But here's the thing. Now people aren't buying the cable packages. Now, But what we are paying for, we need internet, internet for. Right. Who provides our internet? Our cable companies. So what some of the things we're seeing with that um, is is companies that are restricting the highest internet speeds, like the gigabit speeds. For you, you have to have a bundled cable package. Well, and and let's not forget um, this also sort of draws in the whole net neutrality debate, which mm. could have a few episodes yeah. of its own if we wanted to. <laughs> Many, but you know now the the question comes up, which is, well, I have uh, you know, we'll just say X companies cable. Okay. And X company is owned by Y company that also has a streaming service. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Y company's proprietary streaming service. I'm not naming names here, but this other <laughs> evil company's proprietary streaming service competes with Netflix. And we <coughs> give Dis them their internet. <coughs> Disney. <coughs> Disney. And we give them their <laughs> internet. So, like, let's just make Netflix excruciatingly slow and we'll make our own magical streaming service, you know, I don't know, like Pisney Plus will make it like <laughs> super fast. Yeah, that's a um, thing that that and maybe even, can happen and now. maybe subtly enough where people don't don't really notice and then guess which like, one they're oh, paying Netflix for. Netflix is a little bit slow, but mm -hmm. like yeah, I mean we live in a I mean, we have a culture that convenience is the most important factor. So we if something a takes society. a little bit, <laughs> if something takes a little bit longer, we're less likely to do it. Um, we, I mean, and that that definitely can be a whole episode of its own on corporate control, but specifically on the media consumption is is now and and now it's less that because everyone's doing their own streaming services, like you can't find as much stuff on Netflix, right? You can't like you used to be able to find all the Disney movies and all that stuff on Netflix. They still have the Marvel stuff, and because I think they have contracts, but all the licensing deals are crazy. Like just I just imagine how big of a legal team Netflix has to have. But now that everyone's making their own streaming services, no one wants to do the licensing deal. So no. everyone's making their own content. I mean, Netflix has been poor. I mean, they think they poured over $2 billion last year isn't into Netflix like, originals. Isn't it like eight? I thought it was more than that. Oh, it might be. It's, it's oh, anyways, a huge amount of it's money. It's a huge amount of money poured into creating content, creating Netflix originals. Um, YouTube's doing that with YouTube Premium and YouTube Originals. Excuse me. They Hulu um, even has originals. Yeah, I Amazon mean, does. I mean, and even like YouTube has like originals from like big names, like their most recent one, um, this one called Weird City was Jordan Peele's. 
And like he's he's not a small name. No. Hell Ooh. Snapchat has originals yeah, now. Yeah, Snapchat has original stories. I mean, granted they're terrible. Well, but hey, uh, but the, still someone must be looking it. at them. Someone has to be yeah. watching them because they still exist. Well, on the topic of Snapchat, I mean, you think of how look at all those media companies that have their curated Snapchat so, stories. Yeah, actually I wanted to get to that in okay. a little bit. Let's not let's not jump okay. to that yet. Let's not let's, jump the let's gun. Let's first talk about what streaming has done to traditional media. Oh, okay. So, one thing I'd like to talk about is the disappearance of like traditional classical like movies like the way we had like say 10 years ago think about Forrest Gump okay. right Forrest Gump the movie yeah it's not a franchise it's just one no. movie right exactly I don't think anyone who was in for was was any of the the cast of Forrest Gump like huge when the movie came out or were they just like okay I mean I I don't remember. I mean, Tom Hanks is huge now, but right. I don't know about back then. But what I'm saying is we actually, we could never have a Forrest Gump today. It's not going to happen anymore. Because now Why? all of the traditional movie studios, they're not really in the movie business anymore. They're in the franchise business now. It's all about the Marvel movie or the Pirates of the Caribbean movie or the Cars movie or the Pixar X. It's not really about anymore like, yeah, hey, let's just make a right. movie. Anyone who wants to do something like that, who wants to make like a Forrest Gump, it's the the streaming houses like Netflix. Like, the only one who could actually pull off a Forrest Gump in 2019 is Netflix. Yeah. Um, which is I mean, interesting I mean look at what they just pulled off with, with Roma. I mean, with all of its Oscar noms and some of their that, wins. That's what I mean. They can't just like, you can't just make a movie anymore. Well, because and, at this point, yeah. if you're a movie studio, Mm-mm. like I'm talking like old school movie studio, yeah. you're being forced to adapt in a way that um, you, you just have to. Because yeah. so all you, you have now things is your like franchise. like Universal and yeah. all of those. And, and what, the reason I bring this up is because it's actually really similar to what happened to music. Uh, okay. Like, like uh, one one wave ago. Okay. So you know, in the '90s, music was huge, yeah. right? Like people were buying CDs and records, and people were you would, they would go to like I mean, their and, local and CD before, store and, and pay twenty dollars for an album. Like well, before the '90s too, with records and I mean, yeah, it's always that, that been was big. always a thing. But yeah. like sometime in the '90s is when it stopped being so rosy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we got the internet and piracy, and it was just going really badly. Artists were getting annoyed because, you know, labels were taking a lot of their money and artists were like, well, what are you doing? And what that did is it opened up the possibility for like Spotify to exist. And I mean, well, and well, Napster kind of really started that off. Yes. But, yeah. But yeah, the whole platform. And, and you know, now people are crediting, like actually saying this is I got it from a Guardian article okay. that the music streaming industry. So Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, those types of services yeah. basically have revived the music industry. Artists are more eager now to make music because uh-huh. it's easier to do it. They don't have to deal with labels. I mean, oh, one yeah. of my favorite musicians, anyone who knows me well enough knows that I'm a huge Frank Ocean fan, right? <laughs> You're a very it's, wavy. It's possible now for you know, not just people like him. He's huge. He's talented. Yeah. He's best in class. But it's possible now for people to sort of make music without a label, which is exactly what like the Blonde album was. It was yeah. a label-less album. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's that's how Chance the Rapper does all of his music, right. and he's huge and too. To think that you know, ten years ago, if we were in actually not ten, <laughs> this is crazy. It makes me feel old. Fourteen years. <laughs> ago if we went back to 2005 you couldn't do that you couldn't have a like a proper no. studio album no. without a label no um and i think that's what's going to happen with with video I services like now i think i think what we're seeing here is, is almost a parallel of what we saw with with music yeah a uh, one wave ago we're going to yeah. see with video the thing yeah, that alarms true. me now though when it comes to video is the whole the, the diversity of all the streaming platforms. Now, I'm not like anti-diversity. It's good when you have multiple streaming platforms yeah. competing for your business. Uh-huh. But I worry that we're going to end up basically back the way we used to with cable, which is like, oh, well, I'm paying Netflix $10 yeah. a month for this. I have this other one subscribed for this much money. Yeah. And like, you know, I need to subscribe to 10, 20, 15. Yeah, I get what you're saying. However many streaming platforms just you're, to watch everything I want to watch. You're, you're subbing to Netflix to get Netflix content. And yeah, like I want to watch Narcos, I get Netflix. I yeah. want to watch, you know, Letterkenny, I get Hulu. It's I want to watch. Channel. I wonder how much of that is like, I mean, so it seems like, that's kind of where we're getting back to. We had like some disruption in the way media was created and and paid for. Um, But it almost seems that the people, the executives who are doing this don't know how to do it any other way. I I think the issue is that everyone is trying to be the top dog. 
Yeah. Basically, Netflix is like, we need to differentiate ourselves from our competition by having awesome original content. Mm -hmm. So they're like, great, let's do it. Now, Amazon's like, well, they have some, so we need to as well. Yep. And I think what's going to happen is eventually everyone's going to run out of money. And this is just a, a matter of who has the biggest war chest. Yeah. And I know this sounds like it's coming out of left field. But I have a feeling that no no company can keep up this act of let's spend insane amounts of money on original content forever. Yeah. And at some point, they're going to run out of money. Yeah. So you look at those players and you've got Netflix, which is great. Netflix is a huge company. They have tons of money, but they are a movie streaming business. That's not, that's it. That's what Netflix does. Right? Yeah. Hulu, which is owned by all the cable companies, they're not exactly in a great place right now. No. You've got Amazon Prime Video, and then Apple is allegedly working on something that isn't out yet. So I have a feeling that if we sort of drag this one out, we jump forward 10 years, and we look at which streaming service is the most popular or still exists, this sounds crazy to say it, but I have a feeling that it's either going to be Prime Video or whatever Apple comes up with, because those are the yeah. only two companies that have these massive... Amounts of cash. No oh, one else no, can I, afford yeah. to lose money. No, I, I see that for that long. I think Apple's ultimate success will be determined on whether they make it a i i iOS device only service. And I don't think they will because and I hope they because don't. Because they just added AirPlay to Samsung TVs. Mm -hmm. They just brought iTunes. iTunes, <laughs> not even like at, like iTunes, the old iTunes, just came out on Samsung TVs, okay. which is weird. The HomePod is going to get support for other video, for mu other music things. Oh, really? Okay, wow. Google Assistant can play Apple Music now. Really? Uh, a few okay. a few weeks ago, people's Google Google Home apps started popping up with Apple Music in them, and oh, people asked Google, and they were like, "Oh, that was a bug." I'm like, "Oh, really? Someone typed a few wrong keys and accidentally built Apple Music integration <laughs> uh, into the Google oops, Assistant." I accidentally built a new feature. Oops. <laughs> My yeah. bad. Just a normal Tuesday. Yeah. So it's 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 happening. Yeah. I think I think they're gonna yeah. play fair, um, which I'm okay with. I'm I'm and I don't want to say happy. fair. They're just doing this because it's more money for them. Yeah. See, in this in this case, it makes sense for them to open it up to other people because they does. make more money that way. It does. I think Apple's gonna do whatever makes the money. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, we're as we're approaching common kind of our end. Um, let's move on to to our our last point that we wanted to get to about. What's next? Yeah. Like what, I mean, changes that we're kind of seeing the start of, but like what, and less, less as far as like, who will we get our media from and which company, but more of like, what about the types of content and media is, I mean, that's changing. Yeah. So what do you think the next one's going to be? If you had to pick one huge thing, you get one choice. One huge thing. What will, so, and, and I'll give you some examples of what, what kind of answers we're looking for. I, okay. I feel like you have an idea, but <laughs> yeah. for people who are I mean, listening. I can see it here. So if I had asked you this question in 2010, mm -hmm. what is the next big wave? Your right answer would have been smartphones or like people watching videos on YouTube on their smartphone. YouTube basically yeah. is the answer. Yeah. Streaming. So now what is going to be that but for 2020 and beyond is the question I'm asking Ethan. I think he already knew that though. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess. I think um, honestly what I'm looking forward to and hoping becomes bigger Um but I mean, and maybe not hoping also, but is more interactive content like Netflix recently did with the Black Mirror, the Bandersnatch, Bandersnatch. episode. I feel like that was very unique. I mean, it was, that was definitely on brand for Netflix and Black Mirror. Yeah. But I feel like that type of stuff has a lot of um, potential. And and while yes, like I don't think we're ever going to go away and do away with traditional um storytelling and content in tv shows and in film because i mean that's that's an art form right and that's that's it's storytelling it always has been like at the end of the day when we talked about the the way we've evolved mm -hmm. how we watch media it's, it's always telling a story yeah it always has been but what we can do with interactive i think is is i mean i think it, while it creates some more challenges it really opens up what we can do to tell a story in an art form. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, you need, I mean, Bandersnatch had about five hours of final edited footage for an hour and a half long thing. It was five hours, really. Five hours of footage, which is, which is a, a lot, lot more to film and a lot more expensive than um, just an hour, an hour and, and a half. half. Yeah. However, a lot of the scenes were just slightly different. So it was a little quicker to just do another scene 
at the same place, just slightly different. Um, but still, I mean, that's a that's that's an additional expense. And I don't know if he'll be able to afford that. But but I honestly don't know. I'm a lot of people would say that like an MR. AR, VR, X, or XR is what they're referring that's, to that's that what whole they thing. Because now everyone's got their yeah. own, like, um, version of reality that they're trying to sell. I mean, yeah, and but, like, different and that kind of stuff. Everyone, a lot of people think that that is going to become huge and really important. I don't think so. You know, I'll tell you where I think that's going. I think that all of this, all of these different versions of reality, this XR is what I'll call it from here on out, is going to be hugely useful for industry and for enterprise. Yeah. I do sure. not think at least I mean, but you know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna retract that. It will be hugely useful for enterprise now, like yeah. in the next three to five years. I think if you give it more time, it will be a consumer thing. And the reason I think that is because of the incredible power that we're getting in our mobile devices from it. Like, we're so deeply ingrained in our cell phones, right? Yeah. And you look at what, uh, you know, uh, any any recent iPhone can do. Now, mm-hmm. Google, I'm not making fun of Android here, but there, it's always a lot more fragmented, so I'm not yeah. even going to mention them. Um, but you look at some of the stuff that any recent iPhone can do with augmented reality, and it's insane. From yeah. an entertainment standpoint, there's a lot of potential. Yeah. I think we have yet to figure out how to harness that potential for consumer. Yeah. Here's, I mean, here's my thing. I mean, I don't know how far out the research is, but just judging by the exponential rate of technology development that we've seen, I mean, just ever, um, what I, I mean, I don't know if there is. I mean, I feel like the the next step above looking at a screen, your phone, a computer, I mean, sitting in a movie theater, whatever you want to do, I think the next step is not just putting a screen right on our faces. I think the next step is avoiding the optical nerve altogether. And I think having a, as I mean, Elon Musk has mentioned this, like having a brain a, connection, a, a better an interface directly into the brain that bypasses, because like I mean, you think about how much processing power it takes to display images, and then the eye sees the images and processes that, why can't we just bypass the actual eye and go figure out the signals we need right into the optical nerve? I get what you're saying. I really hope that's not what happens. I would like to make that clear. I'm not a fan (laughs) of this idea, Um, but I think what we will see is increasing um, use of context. Yeah. Uh, One example of that is like mobile video. Which mm-hmm. really isn't a new thing. It's basically we took the videos we already had, we made them shorter, and we made them vertical, and we got mobile video. So yeah. if you look at those like uh, the fancy Snapchat stories, Instagram has something now called IGTV, yeah. which I honestly which thought was really... a joke when it came out. I was like, did they actually call it that? But I, I guess think they it did. It is a joke still. I mean, it no, never. No, I actually watched it the other day. Really? I. I... Found some interesting content on there. I watched a Barstool. You know Ken Jeong, that doctor yeah. that became an actor? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did this really funny thing with Barstool Sports on there. He I watched it. With I enjoyed okay. it. It was like two minutes and 20 seconds, okay. and it was great. Yeah. I just, um, I mean, I guess I just didn't realize it had, I mean, I, it didn't seem to take off as much as they had hoped. Um, and I think when it could thing, just be me. none of these platforms are putting out numbers, which is yeah. interesting. We don't know how many people watch Snapchat Discover. We don't know how many people watch IGTV. No one does, no. except for probably them. Um, Mark. Zark. <clears throat> Zark. But I think what will be really interesting in the next few years is contextualizing what I am doing where I am and sort of combining that with content. Yeah. Um, because as of as of now, I mean, I don't know how to explain this, really. It's, it's, it's weird. It sounds like super far out. But if you think about it, like when my phone can be like, oh, I just saw you got home and you had a nice st- stressful day at work today. Do you want to watch like some sort of relaxing movie mm. versus, oh, it's the weekend. You're hanging out with your pals. Let's watch like a stoner comedy or something mm. like that. Um, yeah. No, I see that. But then I mean, that just that that introduces the problems of when we're no longer making the choices. Right. Who, who is? is? Yeah. And, and and who controls what makes the choices? And, and I think this context isn't necessarily just what you're doing. At the time, it also makes sense to think about the device that you're watching on. Yeah. This new vertical video, uh, super short, like one to two minute, mm-hmm. is like, I think in itself, a sort of understanding of context. I think Because for you're sure. watching it on your cell phone. Like, I know before phones, everything was landscape. Yeah. I know people who are like photography and film snobs like yourself hate the idea of vertical video. <laughs> Um, Originally, I did, but I don't anymore. I, mean, I, I think it's what how you hold your phone. What you're <laughs> saying is important. I, I, it's not that it's a necessarily replacement, and it never will be. But it's it's 
an additional avenue that works better for certain types of content. It's an understanding. Like it's I probably, empathy I probably how you watch wouldn't your make the effort to go onto YouTube or streaming service to watch whatever daily short barstool sports compilation of random internet bits. But right. Snapchat. Hold perfect. my phone vertical? Sure. I mean, that's perfect. I mean, that's it's great. great. It's, it's his they, own context. Yeah. And they all do some very creative things with that, with splitting the screen in half and having, say, a host on top and looking at content on the bottom. It's and there's awesome. a lot you can do with it. There's a lot you can do with it. And mm -hmm. I think that one of the biggest things, trends, because it's super hard to define what's next in technology, but I think yeah. no matter what is next, media has to follow it. Yeah. Like, I don't think mobile video would have caught on nearly as much as it did if I was still watching 30-minute TV show episodes holding my phone sideways. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I think that's almost too long. Yeah. Too, I mean, I think above a certain time. Above, I mean, if you're attention not spans are on. short. Phones make them shorter. Three minutes or less. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, TV show content, right? I mean, I don't know how much of that is watched on, on, on phones beyond... But I, I, I'd, be, I'd be interested to see those numbers. But I mean, because like an iPad, right? Perfect, Perfect for watching. I mean, even a movie, yeah, like a full on movie. On an airplane. It's fine. It's great. Yeah. Um, but I think no matter what's next, and we talked about this a little bit before we started recording, and we're, we're going to wrap this up real soon. No matter what's next, one important thing. Everyone, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the important thing that the companies and businesses have to consider is how will this be used for sex? Yeah, I mean you look. I mean, look at what Evan. Actually, let's be clear for porn specifically. Yeah, um, I mean, so Evan Spiegel, right, in charge of Snapchat. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think it's weird that we're having this conversation, but it's an important conversation. Uh, so, so they they introduced Snapcash, right? It was what two years ago. Four. Four, four years, years okay. ago. I don't know. It was like 2015. It, it was so poorly marketed. I mean, that's how I don't know. Anyways, they used introduced it, right? And they got rid of it recently because the only thing it was being used for would be paying for nudes and premium Snapchat and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, and I, um, they didn't necessarily, either they didn't consider it. I mean, they said that was the reason they were shutting it down. Um, when, you, when you look at any, I mean, this is a weird topic, but still you look at anything about any like film or any vision of the future in a dystopian thing, right? Like, oh, there's always at least... Some part well, that is huge for as humans, we are going to indulge. I don't want to say like our sinful or our bad <laughs> desires, but like, the yeah, power we're going of Christ to compels you. No, we're always going to, as humans, yeah. that's just what happens. Anytime yeah. a new thing comes out, people think, huh, how could I use this? Not just for like for for sexual and pornographic things, but it's also like, how could I use this to do like how can I use this to commit crimes? Yeah. Right? Like, people think about questions yeah. like that. I mean, whatever you may feel about porn or crimes or whatever, I mean... Okay, I... I it, no one feels good about crimes. You're right. Okay, okay obviously. Let's, just, let's be obvious but about that. But it, it's something that has to be considered. And I guess moving... I mean, crime is a whole... That's, that's probably... That's something else. That's something, something else. else. But if the market is there for pornographic type... Content. Content, right? You would have to be... in idiot to not think that it will exist. Oh, it's going to be a lot of money. I mean, it's going to be a lot of if, money. If there's a demand, there is a supply. Yes. I mean, this is just basic economics here that we're talking right, about. Right, right. Um, I mean, yeah, this, I, it's, we're in, in, we're, we're, this is on the internet, so we're not under any FCC No, rules. it's just a weird conversation to have. It's a weird conversation to have. Just two dudes sitting around the table. There's a third um, dude over there. He's watching us. Third dude. And we have Nish Hi, in spirit. Yeah, Nish, Nish better start coming to these more. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> on that lovely note to finish off of, um, I mean, if you just want to re retouch on a f just a few top yeah. of our topics, let's, just to close this let's, out. Let's go through what we went through. So yeah, we wanted to talk about how media consumption has changed sort of since the dawn of time. Yep. What have we as a human race done to change the way that we view and consume media? Uh, you know, we talked a bit about streaming. Uh, the effects it sort of had on the more traditional industries it operates yep. in, um, what that is doing to traditional media, like what happens to TV yeah. shows now that streaming has existed. You know, we wanted to wrap it up, talk a little bit about what we thought was next. So in short, what did you think is next? You think it's interactive Bandersnatch type stuff. I think so. I think it's it's more empathy and context around how we're watching and consuming yeah. content. And, and, and I don't disagree with yours. I, I don't right. think it, it's they're, just, they're not mutually exclusive. Right, exactly. They, they sort of go hand in hand. They do. 
Yeah. Um, um, and yeah, that was yeah. data transmission number three, number two. <laughs> <laughs> the second take uh, of number three. Um, and that's in the books. So right. thank you, everybody, Thanks for tuning for watching. in. Um, this has been another episode of Data Transmission. Be sure to check out our other episodes um, down below. We're working on Spotify and iTunes. Yeah, we really so are. We're that, that that should be soon. Um, Give it like a week. A week tops. This, so this will come out on Tuesday. So maybe maybe this maybe, week. Maybe maybe by Tuesday. Maybe when you're when you're watching this, it'll be there and you maybe. can listen to it. We'll we'll link it as yeah. quickly yeah, as we can. Um, thanks everybody for for tuning in. Uh, join us in two weeks yep. for us to talk about another exciting emerging issue in technology. Yeah. Thank you.